paper, we seek to identify a distinct listed infrastructure asset class. This is a relevant empirical question on several counts. Asset owners and managers frequently use stock market data as proxies of private assets for asset allocation or valuation purposes. Index providers have created dedicated listed infrastructure indices, arguing that they represent a distinct asset class. Some asset managers even specialize in listed infrastructure due to these presumed unique characteristics. But most academic papers that have looked at infrastructure stock market data do not find very conclusive results. A distinct asset class can be said to exist when investments co-vary more amongst themselves and less with other groups of assets. Indeed, many investors expect infrastructure investments to exhibit low return correlation with other assets due to the nature of their business. To understand whether listed infrastructure really is an asset class in its own right, we need to focus on covariance. To test this idea, we proceed in three steps. We first create 22 different proxies of the infrastructure sector using stocks in global, US and UK markets. For 12 of these, we select stocks mechanically by sector and because they derive a minimum proportion of their income from these sectors in global markets. Nine proxies are listed infrastructure indices provided by the index providers for global and US markets. And the last one uses the stocks of five UK companies that solely invest in one type of infrastructure project and which we call the PFI portfolio. We return to this shortly. Next, we compare the characteristics of these baskets of stocks with the relevant broad market benchmarks. Given our research question, we are particularly interested in the risk and correlation metrics. Looking at the return volatility, maximum drawdown and value at risk of the 12 portfolios that filter stocks by sector and income source, we find a range of performance outcomes, but a consistent picture of the risk profile of global listed infrastructure. These 14 proxies are all at least as volatile as market benchmarks. They exhibit similar, if not higher, drawdown and value at risk, and they are all highly correlated with the market, at very high levels of statistical significance. Next, we look at the same metrics for nine global and US listed infrastructure indices provided by five index providers and investment banks. We find a very similar picture. Risk and correlations are on par with the market, if not higher. Finally, let's look at our PFI portfolio. These five firms only have one purpose, buying the equity of private infrastructure projects that have a contracted business model. These projects receive a very predictable income in exchange for building and operating certain infrastructure projects over multi-decade periods. The listed firms have no additional leverage and engage in no other activity. While there are only five such firms, they correspond to an underlying portfolio of close to 250 projects primarily located in the UK and a few other OECD jurisdictions. Contrary to previous listed infrastructure proxies, the PFI portfolio has very distinctive characteristics. Practically no correlation with the market, lower volatility, half the drawdown and value at risk of the UK equity market. Next, we test whether or not these portfolios can create diversification benefits for a large investor already exposed to a range of standard asset classes or risk factors. Mean variance spanning consists of testing a simple hypothesis using a series of tests of statistical significance. First, we give a reference investor a portfolio of asset classes or risk factors to invest in, along the usual mean variance efficient frontier. Next, we add a new type of asset to this universe, here one of our 22 proxies of listed infrastructure, and we test whether they make a difference and effectively shift the efficient frontier to the northwest, implying better diversification. Formally, it means that of these two models, linking the reference and the test assets, one must explain the data better than the other. Otherwise, listed infrastructure is already spanned by existing asset classes, in which case, there is no new asset class to speak of. We run 176 such tests with our different proxies, from 2000 to 2015, as well as before and after the 2008 crisis, to establish whether there's a persistent and significant effect of adding listed infrastructure to the reference portfolios. 
Given the correlation levels reported earlier, it's not too surprising that we find listed infrastructure to be already spanned by a combination of asset classes or risk factors that were available in capital markets over the past 15 years. With or without the listed infrastructure portfolios, the efficient frontier of our reference investor barely moves, especially since 2008. The listed infrastructure asset class does not exist. However, there is one exception. The PFI portfolio, with its market beta close to zero and high sharp ratio, was a good candidate for passing the mean variance test. Indeed, when added to a reference portfolio of UK asset classes, it does create new space for diversification, especially since the GFC, but only on a total return basis. Before 2008, however, it does not shift the efficient frontier. In conclusion, we argue that there is no such thing as a listed infrastructure asset class. 21 proxies, combining stocks selected by industrial origin and exposure, fail to tell a convincing story of persistently improved diversification, especially since the GFC. Only one proxy passes this test, and it's built very differently from the others. The PFI portfolio does not focus on industrial sectors, but on a type of infrastructure project business model. These results may seem counterintuitive, but they highlight the repeated fallacy of identifying new asset classes simply because a new label can be attached to certain investments. Fundamentally, investors are after exposure to remunerated risk factors. Here, clearly, filtering infrastructure stocks by industrial sector does not create any new exposure. A filter, using what we call infrastructure business models, is more successful at drawing out a unique effect. More importantly, our main conclusion is that the characteristics of private infrastructure investments are not easily proxied and not available through existing capital market instruments.